Wednesdays because I feel like Wednesdays are such hopeful days um, through school or anything when you, you know you get to that Wednesday right at that top, that hump day, and then everything else is easy coasting, kind of downhill. So I want you to think about that today when we start our yoga practice. Um, what looks like it might be a comfortable pose in my body might not feel good in your body. And yoga is about finding your individual expression and how it feels good in your body. Now, when I start a yoga practice, and if this is one of your first yoga practices, you are in the right place. This is an all-level um, Hatha Yoga Flow. My name is Shannon Sims. Now, I've been practicing for about 14, maybe going on 15 years. Because of that, what feels good in my body has changed over the years from where I started. Where I started, what I feel good with now would not have felt good because it would have been too much, it would have been too tight. So really finding an area that feels amazing in your body is your number one goal. And if I'm not doing that, I'm doing somebody else's practice and this is your practice. So I want you to come into a comfortable seated pose and again, this might not be comfortable. Um, you might be more comfortable out here, legs out here, but wherever you are, I want you to find your comfortable seat. And just take a minute, roll your shoulders back, sit up a little taller, and if you can't sit tall, if you feel like you're being pulled back like this, then I want you to prop yourself up on a blanket, or maybe even a block if you need a little bit more. And you're at home, you can use um, a bath towel, you can use pillows. There's a number of things that you can use. And we're going to probably use this for the next hour. So if you want to take a moment, go and grab that and fly back. I'm going to be here. So you're, you're good. So sitting up nice and tall, draw your needle in. Pull your shoulders back. And I want you to feel length between the neck and the ears. And as I'm doing this, I want to feel this elongation. So one of the things that I want to do in yoga is kind of decompress my spine. Now, face your palms up, and then face your palms down, and notice which direction felt most, most comfortable for you, and stay there. And that might be palms up, it might be palms down, and it's going to vary from day to day. And sometimes I like to offer both, because when I offer both, it changes. So, drawing your heart up, lift your heart up a little bit, pull your shoulder blades back, and just start to breathe in through your nose, out through your nose, and find this comfortable breath, find your ujjayi breath. And as I breathe in through the nose, I'm not actually pushing out through the nose and breathing in and out through the nose, but I'm diffusing it at the back of the throat. And then take a moment here and I want you to think, what is the one thing that brings you the most amount of joy? You know, if you have a, a list of 10 things, what is that one thing that always just makes you happy? you smile. And I want you to focus on that. That one thing that just makes your heart sing. Maybe saying gratitude around having that or maybe finding that or even finding more ways to feel that level of sense of joy. And then taking your hands to your heart, one's pressed to your chest. Set an intent. If you have a definitive intent for your practice today, set that. If you're not really sure, 
set an intent to find more ways to bring you that level of joy and happiness. And then taking one hand to your heart and then take the other hand And just filling up that heart space and feeling that sense of gratitude in your heart, filling that up. Breathing deeply. Nice. Take your hands now by your side. Let's bring the ears and the shoulders towards each other and just rolling out the shoulders. And opening the heart space a little bit here. <laughs> Lily, come here. Bring your shoulders to the other direction. <laughs> You're not Lily. Let's reach and extend the arms up. I've got lots of friends today. Use your right hand, grab onto your left wrist, and reach over. Stay over here, babe. Lily, stay over here. Open your heart up in your chest. On your inhale, coming back to the center, and then use the left hand, grab onto the right wrist, and just pull over. Find space in your side body. Now, if this hurts your arms, bring your arms a little bit more forward. If it doesn't, reach your arms so your arms are finding the tops of the ears. On your inhale, lifting up, and reach and extend the fingers out to the side. Bend your elbows and pull your elbows down. Lift your heart, lift your chest, pull your arms back. Reach and extend the arms up on your inhale. And then exhale, interlock your fingers and pull your shoulders back and kind of push your head through your arms like it's a basket. On your inhale, lift and extend the arms up. Right hand grabs on the left wrist, turn the left palm up. Reach over and kind of press your armpit up towards the sky. Lift the heart, lift the chest. On your inhale, coming back to the center. And then release, taking that right hand, face the palm up. And then exhale over towards the side, kind of opening your ribs a little bit. And we're coming back to the center, head low. This is my Lily. She is 16 years old. Normally I have to lock her up because she's kind of a barker, but we forgot. So we're going to make the best of it and hope that she stays a little bit more on the quiet side, but she is shedding all over me. Let's inhale and extend the arms. Interlock the fingers, press forward, shoulders back, head threads through, push the shoulders down. Move your head a little side to side. On your inhale, lift and extend the arms up and take the hands down to your heart, thumbs pressed to your chest. Move your ears, so your right ear is going over towards the right side. And take your right hand and just massage out your left shoulder. Maybe encouraging the shoulder to come down a little bit. And again, doing this in a way that feels good for the body. Now that it feels good, press the shoulder down a little bit. Reach and extend the left arm forward. Pull the shoulder back and just encourage. And I'm not pushing, I'm just really giving it guidance and encouragement to press the shoulder down. Bring the elbow in. Bring the chin in towards the chest. Reach the hands to the left. And then inhale the head. Let's bring that left ear over towards the left side. And take the hands and bring that left arm over towards that right side and start encouraging that shoulder down. And kind of just massaging it out a little bit for a moment. Think about pulling the right elbow down, palm faces up, and then inhale, extending the palm. If it still feels good, guide the shoulder down. If it's too much, keep that elbow down a little bit. Lift the heart, lift the chest. And then bring the elbow down, other elbow comes down, and bring the crown of the head forward. Bring the palms down. Try to press the shoulders down. Don't overextend the head back. So if you're starting to feel compression in the neck when you do this, make sure to push the chest forward in opposition or don't go back so far. When you feel compression, it's kind of too late and it starts to cause a lot of damage to the neck. 
So this should feel good. If it doesn't feel good, then I'm over pushing. Hello, Bo. I've got all, uh, this is Beauregard, and Beauregard's kind of a snoopy, as you can see, he has no personal space. So we're gonna come up on the hands and knees, and I'm gonna kind of guide Bo over towards the side. I'm gonna take the hands so the wrists and shoulders align, and I'm gonna move my blocks out of the way. So let's find our cat cows. Press your wrists so your wrists and shoulders align. Spread your fingers out. Now, your wrists might be a little tight. So let's roll out for the wrist. Press a little bit of energy into the palms. And if this is too much, round the back a little bit. As I round the back and pull the belly in, it takes a lot of pressure off the wrists. If you want a little more pressure, you're going to kind of cow shape the body. And what that is, it's kind of that arch in the lower back. Pressing into the wrist, pressing into the thumb knuckles, so especially towards the palm, that first set of knuckles, and the index knuckle. And I also want you to kind of press into the pinky knuckle. Keep the fingertips light and press into just the tips of the fingers so you can maybe see that your fingertips turn white. And moving little circles around the wrist. So circle the shoulders, pressing in, and notice where you might feel this. When you're ready, rounding the back up, pressing through, and kind of thread the head through the arm. Pull the belly in, push the hips forward, and on your inhale, dive your chest forward, pull your shoulders slightly back. Exhale, round, pushing up, and then inhale, pressing forward. I'm gonna bring the knees a little closer together, Knees are going to come all the way in. Right leg extends out. Bring that right leg out away from you. Bring your right knee in towards your nose, round your spine. And then inhale, extend, and reach the heart forward. Bow, stop. Right knee in towards the nose, round the spine. And then inhale, extend, gaze forward. Right knee in towards the nose, round the spine. Inhale, extend, gaze forward. Right knee comes down. We're going to thread the right arm. So I want you to move the knees out a little bit wider. Right hand comes through. Face the palm underneath and press down to the right shoulder blade. Use your left hand and kind of push into the ground. If it's comfortable, gaze up. Now as I gaze up, I'm turning just the head. So see if you can try to slide the right shoulder a little more towards the left side. And then turn your rib cage over towards that left side. Now, if the rib cage is turned over towards the left, see if the left arm can start to come up. If the left arm comes up, maybe bend the elbow and pull the heart up a little bit more. Stay your breath. Use the left hand, press yourself down. On your inhale, sweep your right arm all the way up towards the sky. Take the fingers, make a fist. Roll out the wrist. Reach the right arm forward, round the back, pull the right rib cage up towards the sky, touch the right hand down. Inhale, extend the arm, gaze back up, pull the left shoulder back. Right arm reaches forward, keep extending. And then inhale, extend, pull the left shoulder back. Right hand comes down. Round your back, lift him up. Inhale, come forward. Bring the knees so the knees come back at distance apart. Press through the arms. Shoulders and wrists align. This time I'm going to reach that left leg up. Square the hip. Bring the knee towards the nose. Round the spine. And then inhale, extend. And try to pull your knee in towards your nose, not so much your nose towards your knee. So pull the knee forward and press up. That press up gives me a little bit more room to bring the head forward. Exhale, so tap the body, pull the belly. Inhale, extend, reach the leg back long. Left knee is gonna come out, right knee is gonna come out and widen the stance. This time I'm going to plant the right hand underneath and I'm going to reach that left arm up towards the sky. Draw the left shoulder back as you draw the right shoulder back. And so that's going to protect the right shoulder as well. 
Keep that left arm reaching through. And this time, I'm going to face the palm up. Bring it down to the left shoulder. Right hand is down by the mat. And see, can you start to move this left shoulder a little bit more towards the right side? Now you have, maybe start to gaze up. Reach and extend the right arm up. Bend the right elbow. See if you turn the ribs a little bit. Maybe even take the hands towards the ribs. And see, can I turn the ribs a little bit more? It's that turn of the ribs that causes the twist. And then I'm able to draw that arm back a little bit and get this chest opener. So really open here, gazing up if it's comfortable. If it's not, gaze over towards that right side. When you're ready, right hand comes down. Press right through. Inhale, lengthen. Pull the right shoulder back towards the ribs. Maybe start to reach that left arm forward. Lift the left rib cage up towards the sky. Fingers might touch. Inhale, bring the hand back up. And then exhale, bring the hands down. And this time, walk the hands forward a little bit. Curl the toes and pull yourself back towards your hips. And move in this little circular fashion. Now keep your spine in somewhat of a neutral position. And just move the hips a little forward and back. And keep rotating. And nice deep movements going both directions, loosening up whatever might be a little tight. When you're ready, rippling the spine forward, bring the knees back together, take the toes down, find child's pose. Walk the fingers forward. And I want you to tense your wrists. And what I mean by that is you're kind of making what looks like a teepee with your hands and squeeze your fingers in towards your thumbs so you're getting that nice wrist stretch. When you're ready, walk your both fingers over towards the right side of your mat. Pull your ribs to the left and pull your hip over towards the left side as well. See if you can walk the right fingers over a little bit more and even turn your gaze over towards the right side, bringing that left shoulder down a little more. Coming back to the center, hands walk to the center of the mat, tent the fingers. Walk the hands this time over towards the left side as you're doing this, and pull your rib cage towards the right. Pressing the right shoulder down a little bit more, and see if you can walk the left fingertips forward a little more. And keep kind of turning the body. If this hurts the shoulder, press the palms down or bend the elbows. So kind of see where you are. Remember, everything should feel good in your body. So bring your forearms down. I'm going to press the forearms down. Walk your hands forward a little bit. Now, start to dome the back and tilt the tailbone. So you're kind of pulling your belly button in towards the spine. And I'm creating this arc or this C shape in the torso. Gaze towards your knees. Just kind of thread your head through your arm. Pull your shoulders so your shoulders are stacked right over your elbows. And push your arms out to the side, opening into the shoulder stretch. Now as you gaze forward, gaze forward. See if you bring your palms together. Walk your elbows forward a little bit. Curl your toes. Press your tailbone back. And if it's comfortable, pull your thumbs back towards the back of your head. Kind of pressing into the arms, pull the arm bones back as much as you can. And just open your heart a little, open your chest. Pull your elbows back as much as you can. Stay here for one more breath. When you're ready, release the hands, bring the hands down. Lean yourself a little forward and back. And I just want you to move into this. Now start to round to the back as you come forward, but keep the forearms down. And curling the belly in. Now, if this is too much for the forearms, you can bring it to the palms. But we're going to stay in this position. So make sure your elbows and shoulders align. And start to walk your knees back. If that's not happening, just bring your belly down. Find any way that you can. And I want you to slump into it. 
So kind of feel that your shoulder blades come together and the back of your neck is going to actually hit the back of your shoulders. And feel the difference. I'm going to push through the elbows. Lift up as much as you can, spreading the backs of the shoulders. Now, make sure your pinky toes are down and your feet are actually going to turn just slightly in towards each other. And I want you to feel your inner thighs kind of kick on. Now try to straighten the legs, but keep those inner thighs kind of pulling in towards each other, but straighten your feet so your big toe and your pinky toes are down. Slump. And then push through the elbows, lift the heart, and this time lift the belly button when you come up. So exhale, belly button pulls down. And then pull the belly button up as you come up. Exhale, press down. Inhale, lengthen the spine, and this time pull your chest forward, pull your gaze forward, and pull your shoulders back towards your heels. Keep your inner thighs pulling in towards each other and activate the sides of your hips by kind of pulling your inner thighs, squeezing in, but taking your outer thighs and kind of pressing them out a little bit. Now, there's a lot of internal action that's happening here. So there is feeling this, and sometimes you're not sure what you're supposed to feel, and that's okay too. I'm going to take the right foot up, and I'm going to bring my shoulders down a little bit. Flex your foot for a moment. Push your foot up and see if you can lift the leg. And if that feels okay, bring it down. Now press up through your sphinx pose. Keep the elbows where they are, see if the leg can lift up. And it might, it might not, don't worry about it. Stay here for three. And two, and one. Press the leg down, release. Walk yourself forward and just elongate the body. Maybe stretching the fingers forward, stretch the legs back. Let the hips rebound. You're gonna bring your elbows back in and I want you to kind of seat down a little bit. Now, if this is still too much for your back, bring your elbows out a little bit more. And you might be all the way down and that's okay too. So, I'm gonna bring the left toes up. I'm gonna flex the foot. And again, my shoulders and my ears are a little closer. Bring the leg up. See how that feels for your lower back. If you need to adjust, you can bring the elbows out. You can bring the elbows in. Bring that leg down. Now press up. See if you can lengthen your spine, pull your chest forward, belly button is lifted up. Hip is down and maybe lift the back of that leg. Now the left hip is still down. My right leg is pushing in. Staying here for three, two, and one. Release the leg, take the toes down. Bring the elbows out to the side this time. So allow the back to rebound for a moment. Just bring your chin down or turn your head to any direction that feels good. I'm going to take my arms off my mat, over towards the side. Press the elbows up. Take the legs out so the toes are pointed towards the edges of the mat. And if it's comfortable, tent the fingers and extend the elbows. Now, I'm going to ripple, pull your chin in towards your chest like you're holding on to a ball. So if you have a ball tucked into your chin, don't let the ball go. So keep holding on to it. Now, as you come up now, release the ball. Lower down. Think about scooping that ball back into your chin. On your inhale, lifting up, exhale, release it. Lower down one more time. So again, kind of scooping it in. Lift your chest up. Last thing to come is the chin. Exhale lower. Take the feet a little closer together. We're going to come into Shavasana. So I want you to roll your shoulders back. Press your hands like you're about to come into a cobra pose. And just keep your shoulders rolled back. If you can, lift your kneecaps up off the ground. And just engage the lower back. Now, if you're able, just lift the hands, and the hands are coming up to stay here for three, and two, and one. Release, lower everything down, and take your hands and your palms face back behind you. Shoulders come down. Now, I'm pressing to the chin. If this is uncomfortable for your neck, turn your head. Again, any direction that feels good. I'm going to do that one more time. So I'm going to bring the hands just a little bit further. Elbows come up, and I'm not going to push. 
So I'm going to inhale the chest just where I know I can lift the hands up. Now this time I'm going to lift the knees and try to lift the thighs a little bit more. Inner thighs are squeezing together. And see if you can reach your arms back. So your elbows are pulling back. Pull your elbows back towards you. Lift your heart, lift your chest, stay here five. Inner thighs are squeezing, four, three. And this is never easy. Two, and one, lower down. Nice, release your hands, let your shoulders relax. And again, turn your head any direction that feels comfortable. Ugh. Let's inhale through the nose. Exhale, side it out. Press the hands down, curl your toes. Press your heels back and maybe lift your knees and stretch out your calves. And if you want a little more, walk your toes in and keep kind of pushing the toes back, giving that calf stretch. Stay here, breath. When you're ready, knees come down. Push yourself into your tabletop. Walk your wrists so your wrist and shoulders align. Bring the knees a little closer. Keep the toes curled and start to round the back a little bit. Pull your hips back towards your heels. See if you can lift your knees. And if you can, push your tailbone back. Find your downward facing. If downward facing is not in your practice, that's okay. But if you notice, when I'm in my downward facing, I'm not over here creating a lot of wrinkles around the wrist. I'm pressing back away from the wrist, so I'm not seeing a lot of compression into the wrist. And this takes a lot of pressure off your wrist. Now, if I have limited flexibility, I'm going to bend my knees, and I might be up onto the toes. So it's going to look a number of different ways. When you're ready, start to walk yourself forward, and just walk forward as far as you can. Kick it all the way to your wrist, that's okay. Bend your knees where it's towards sides. Head comes down. And move a little side to side. If your back is really tight this morning, that's too much. I want you to take elbows to knees. Stick your bottom back. Let your head hang down. This is a great place to start, especially in the morning. Move your head a little side to side. We're going to come into two more like this. So this first one, I notice that things are pretty tight. The back of the hamstrings might be tight. Move your head the other direction if you're figure eight in here. Release your hands towards your shins or the tops of your thighs. Lift your heart, lengthen, and pull your belly button towards your spine. So you're kind of sucking everything in. Exhale, bend and bow into it. Let's inhale, lengthen. Press into the big toes, pull the belly button in. Exhale, lower. Last one. Inhale, pull the belly button in and spread the toes if you can. Inner thigh spiral out. And then exhale, lower. Slide your hands up towards the tops of the knees and then roll it up a vertebra at a time. Try to stack the rib cage right over the hips, chin in towards the chest. Reach the shoulders back and extend the arms up towards the sky. Push the hips through. Take the hands down to the heart, thumbs pressed to the chest. Stay here, breath. So start to check in. Where's my stance? What's going on with my feet? What's going on with my hips? How does everything feel? And this is this self-awareness in my pose and my practice. And it's gonna be different for everybody. Um, and every day is different. You know, the tide changes, the energy changes, the magnetic pool. And these are things that we can't see, but they're real. You know, just because we can't see gravity doesn't mean that we don't know gravity exists. So remember that there's different gravitational pulls every single day. So there's not necessarily something wrong with you, but there's a change in what I can't see around me. And so being aware of that, let's reach and extend the arms up. Drop your shoulders, push your hips through, tighten your glutes, and gaze up towards your thumbs if it's available. If it's not, don't worry about it. Take the hands to the heart, dive forward, bend your knees back, tailbone presses back as the head comes down. Now, as I'm here, if your hamstrings are loosening up, you might be able to push your inner thighs out a little bit more. Try to keep the ribs connected to the thighs. I might be here again, or I might start to pull that belly button in. Draw your breath down, so exhale. Let it sink and pull you down a little bit more. Inner thighs are actually 
actually pushing out. So when I do this, I'm pushing some energy into the sides of my heels. My hips are actually kind of wanting to open like a hinge. Head is going to come down. I'm going to grab the elbows and just sway a little side to side. When you're ready, release your hands towards the shins or just above the knees and inhale, gaze forward. Never pushing on the knees themselves. Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, fold. The knees are a joint. They're a hinge. We want to avoid pushing on our hinges. Taking your hands to your knees, rolling yourself up, belly comes in. Pushing the hips forward, reach and extend the arms up. Press the shoulders back, tighten the glutes. Exhale, hands find the heart. Let's find a side stretch. So once I come into that second side, we're going to squeeze the legs in. And actually, you know what? If you have a block, I want you to grab on to a block and take that block right between the center of the thighs. And you can see I have space between the block and my groin and space between where my knees and the block are. Now my toes are facing forward. Press into your big toes and see if you can spread the toes. And if they don't spread, don't worry about it, but I want you to keep working towards that. Now push the hips forward. So the hips are forward, and this actually straightens the spine as I'm doing this. It kind of lifts everything up. So it takes that lower back out of its extreme curve. Reach and extend the arms up. Right hand is going to grab onto the left wrist. I want you to pull up. Get length on the rib cage first, and then extend. Extend over towards the right side. Keep squeezing the block. Push the uh, left thigh into the block a little bit more. Hug, hug, hug. On your inhale, coming back. Reach the arms out. Left hand grabs on. I'm going to pull up. So I'm going to lengthen the rib cage as much as I can. Squeeze the block. And then lift your right armpit up. And you're going to notice a lot less compression in the lower back. So as I'm here, I might not be over as far to the side, but I'm never going to hurt my back when I'm doing this. And I'm coming back to the center. Reach the hands down, thumbs pressed to the chest. Take your chin in towards your chest, and just move your head a little side to side. Nice. Now we're going to keep the block if you can on your forward bend. If you've got your block sticking out way right here, you might want to push it back a little bit. Think about pressing into your toes. And again, take the opportunity every time you press into your big toes to spread your other toes. Squeeze your hips forward a little bit. Draw your shoulders back. And then lift and extend the arms up. Exhale, take the hands to the heart, thumbs press to the chest, lowering down. Reach and extend the gaze forward, inner thigh spiral out. Bow, stop. Sorry, my dog is like chewing something that he should not be chewing. Exhale, lower down. Let's inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, lower. And let's inhale, gazing forward. And exhale, lower. Bend your knees. Roll it up, squeeze the block all the way through, finding new areas that maybe feel a little different when I have the sensation. Drop the shoulders, exhale, hands, find the heart, thumbs pressed to the chest. So if you have the block, let's keep it. Make sure it's down just a little bit more. So it's right above the knees. I'm going to find my chair pose. So feet are hip distance apart, big toes, spread the other toes, bend your knees. Now my weight is back. So if you cannot see your big toes, pull back. You want to be able to see your big toes. Push your tailbone back. Reach and extend the arms up. If you have shoulder issues, you can keep the hands to your heart, but kind of wrap the triceps so the triceps are wrapping down. It's almost like the fingers are coming together first if you're holding something. And then just lightly pressing the thumbs towards each other. And they don't have to touch at all. But I always try to pull the pinkies in and the thumbs slightly out. Pull your hips back, little top of that tailbone, so that spine is in more of a neutral position. Let's bring that hands to the heart. Left elbow is going to come maybe to the top of the thumb. Lift the heart. Thumbs might press towards the center. If you're able to get that elbow all the way over to the side, get that elbow 
toe to the side, pressing into the big toe, the pinky toe, lighten up the other toes, and that's kind of hard. Lift the heart, lift the chest, pull the tailbone back. If it's comfortable, reach the right arm up. It might, might not be. When you're ready, bring the hand down. Inhale, come back to the center. And exhale, thumbs to the heart. Right elbow is to come over towards that left thigh, maybe over towards the outside of the left thigh. Thumbs, try to press to the center of the chest and keep trying to turn your ribs so your ribs are reaching towards the left. Squeeze the block, lighten the grip on the toes, press into the big toes so you're hugging to the midline. Maybe the left arm comes up. Bring the left hand down. Inhale, reaching back up. And then exhale, dive forward and just notice how good that feels on the right. Inhale, gaze forward, halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, root to rise. So reaching up from the heels, the legs, the ribs, the arms, extend up. Exhale, take the hands to the heart and take that block down. Nice. Now we're going to come into warrior poses. If you use a block, for your side angle, have that ready. I will show that, so I'm gonna just keep my box towards the front of my mat. So we're gonna start at the top of your mat, and I want you to push into your left leg and step back with your right. And make sure your ankles align on this. I'm coming into warrior two. So I'm going to bend into my knee. Make sure my knee is tracking towards my second toe. And try to get your back arch down a little bit. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm actually trying to turn my ribs towards my long edge. So I'm going to tighten my back right glute. And I'm going to tuck it under just a little bit. And reach and extend the arms out. Drive your shoulders away from your ears and pull your knee forward as you're pulling that arch back. So the hands are reaching apart from each other, and sometimes the feet are reaching apart from each other. And take your palms, face them up. Inhale, the arms reach up. Exhale, open, warrior two. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, and if they don't come together, that's okay. One more. Inhale, reach the arms. Right arm grabs onto that left wrist, and let's just pull back. And he'll come back to the center. Release the arms. And I'm going to bring that left arm forward a little bit. I'm going to bring it down towards the elbow. Or elbow maybe towards the knee. This is where this block can come in handy. This left hand comes down. And I want you to turn and rotate your ribs so your ribs are facing towards the long edge. Reach and extend the right arm up. And just keep your chest really nice and open. Holding here. Staying here for Four, three, two, and one. Inhale, pulling yourself back, straightening out your left leg. So I'm going to reach the left arm forward, finding trikonasana. Maybe the hand comes down to the block, and I'm going to bring that block in a little bit more. And open your chest, reaching yourself over towards the side. Think about extending. Right arm is up. Right arm is up. Right arm reaches forward, right elbow might come down 
towards the lab. And this is where that block might come in handy. And your blocks have levels. So you can either turn it here up to its highest level or that third level, depending on where your flexibility is. So I'm just going to show you. Again, that right elbow is right in line with my right knee. And I might gaze up. Try to open the hips so the ribs are going to face over towards the long edge. Maybe gaze towards the left thumb. If it's not there, don't worry about it. Staying here for just a few breaths. And when you're ready, on your inhale, push and pull yourself back up. Straighten out your right leg. Trikonasana. So I'm going to reach my right arm forward as far as I can. And I'm going to take that block in a little closer. So the block is going to be in line with my shoulder, and that's going to vary from person to person. If you're somebody that's really far out here, it's going to be over here, or you might extend and reach the arm forward and not use the block at all. So I'm just showing you with the block, and you always have options. I want to keep pushing this left hip back and think about reaching the left arm up. And so we're able to kind of come through with the blocks, with the assistance. And if you're not able to come this far down, you can use your thigh. And I'm opening the hips. I don't want this left shoulder pressing over the mat. I want to keep extending, so I'm opening the hips and again, tucking the glutes kind of underneath the legs. So I'm squeezing in, I'm losing my balance, showing you all the options. Gazing up towards the outside of that left thumb. When you're ready, you're going to inhale, pull yourself back. This time we're going to turn the toes towards the long edge. Bring your heels in a little bit. Heel, toe. Now, if you need blocks, you're going to take those blocks right underneath the heart. I want you to try to keep the back as straight as you can when you're doing this. So I'm going to take one hand to my belly, one hand to my lower back. Pull your shoulders back and down. Pull your belly in. Reach your heart forward, pull your tailbone back, and I want you to think about pushing into the outer arches. And those shoulders are going to be forward. Now, if you cannot come down halfway, that's okay. Keep reaching the heart forward, pull the belly button in, minor tuck of the tailbone, but I'm not hugely S curving. I'm going to take some of the pressure off that back. Use the strength of the legs, use the strength of the glutes and the hamstrings, all cooperating here. On your inhale, come back up. We're going to do a few of those. If you know that feels okay, you can take your hands to your hips. Inhale, lengthen the chest. Exhale, pull the chest forward as you pull the tailbone back. Draw the belly in. So I should not be feeling undue or painful pressure in the lower back. So make sure you're pulling the belly button in, a little tuck of the tailbone, so the spine is in neutral. On your inhale, coming back. If you know that felt okay, hands to the shoulders. I'm putting a little bit more gravity forward, but again, I don't want to round the back. Lifting up, pull the tailbone through. Exhale, keep the engagement of the legs. Push into the heels, push into the big toes and the pinky toe. Draw the belly in, pull the shoulders back, Think about pulling the tailbone slightly through so that spine stays in neutral. On your inhale, coming back up. One last option. I'm going to bring it out so you can see how my back is. Now, I'm going to take my hands up. If this felt okay, take it here. If you're either going to be on a block, hands to the heart, hands to the hips, hands to the shoulders, or up. Any of these options are good. Now, you can see this S curve on my back, and I want to take that out. So I'm tucking the tailbone through, lengthening. As I exhale, pushing the weight into my heels, pushing into the big toes, pushing into the pinky toe. Slight minor tuck of the tailbone. The head might be right through the arms, and the arms are going to be towards the ears. Pull the tailbone back as you extend the arms forward. Staying here for three. And two. And one. Inhale, pulling all the way back. Exhale, take the hands to the heart. So we're going to just fold forward. Bend your knees as much as you need to. And kind of pull your rib cage through your legs. Take your hands down if they're available. 
If they're not, you've got those blocks, you have a lot of options, but we're keeping the knees bent, legs are still wider. Now I want you to think about taking the hands maybe around the ankles, the calves, even the back of the thighs, pushing into the heels, press into the big toes, and see if you can start pressing the hips up. You're going to find a place where your legs say to stop. So when you start shaking, when your legs are forcing a movement, that's your stopping point. If you can, find what that is for you and relax. Never forcing the body to come into a position. It's shaking, it's forcing to. Every movement should be like a step forward. It's not a sprint. It shouldn't be a force. Take your hands towards your shins. Keep a micro bend in the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, hands are gonna to come to the blocks if you have those in front of you. If you don't, that's okay. Find your heels come in, toes come out. Bend your knees and bring your tailbone down a little bit. Walk your hands in, bring your tailbone down. Now, if you're able, you're gonna walk those heels in so this is comfortable, you're gonna come into Malasana pose. So this is my yogi squat. For some of you, it's up here, and you might want to bring that blanket and roll it and place it underneath the heels, and just find where eventually the heels will start to come down. Wherever you are, you're going to try to get those heels down, or at least have the heels supported. Now, as you're here a little bit longer, you might be able to bring the toes in. This is going to be different for everybody, but I want you to start to feel this rounding in the back and pull the arms down. Maybe take the hands towards the top of the head and guide the chin towards the chest. And just draw your elbows so the elbows are kind of pulling down, getting this stretch along the lower back and the mid back. If this hurts your back, stay up a little higher. Bring your hands down. Bring yourself on to your bottom. Bring your legs forward. All right, roll your shoulders out. You know that's a lot. So always be in a position that would be comfortable for you. We're going to do a little bit of ab work today. So I want you to think about maybe using the blocks if you need to. I'm going to show you how to use the blocks, and then you can choose to use them or not to use them. Take your hands to the backs of the thighs and lift your heart up. Now pull back a little bit. Try to keep the toes down. Reach the arms forward. If your arms are really struggling, you can use the blocks to press back. You can even use the blocks back here. So if you need more support, you might be here. You can also take the hands down and face the fingers out a little bit. This is still going to engage the core, but we want to try to keep the hands eventually off the mat. Try to press into the big toes and lift the heart as much as you can. So again, I'm keeping that spine in neutral and lift the heart. Now see if you can reach the right leg up and place it down and the left leg up and place it down. We're just going to march in place. We're going to find 10 on each side. And I'm going to bring the leg up. And I want to bring the leg up in this uniform fashion, pulling the knee in towards you as much as you can. And we've got just five more on each side. Pressing that knee in, lifting up, and for four. Pressing up, and three. Getting that leg up as high as you can. Last two, squeezing in. Last one, I know that's sometimes really hard on the hip flexors. When you're ready, start to slowly lower yourself down. I'm going to move back a little bit. So lower yourself all the way down. Chin in towards your chest, pushing the lower back down and taking the head down. This is where I take some of my clips out of my hair. So I want you to keep your feet out a little bit. Walk your feet so they're at least hip distance apart. We're going to find this really wide um, bridge pose. This is going to engage the hamstrings a lot. So as you come up, I want you to think about peeling your chest up. Press your shoulders down, pull your belly button in. You're going to notice that immediate press into the hamstrings. If it's too much, walk the heels in a little bit more. But if you can, just lift up here. You notice, I'm not up really high. The body is in this neutral position and the hamstrings are kicking on. 
Now, when I come into bridge poses and back bends, a lot of times what I should be engaging is my hamstrings, but they're not ready to kick on. So lifting up, think about squeezing the backs of the hamstrings, pushing into the shoulders, and maybe walk the shoulders a little bit in. Now, if you have a big pillow behind your head, make sure to take that out. So your neck is lengthened. I'm going to draw the navel in and just keep pushing the hips up a little bit. Push through the heels so the heels even have this little pushing action. And if you want, you can find these little movements. Let's do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower down a vertebra at a time. Push the lower back down. Grab onto your left knee. Straighten out your left leg, roll out your ankle, and notice that your hamstrings just did a lot. So interlock your fingers behind the back of the left leg, and think about pulling the left leg up a little bit. Maybe bend the knee and straighten, but the minute you feel that leg start to shake, you want to come out of that degree of your stretch. That shaking means the nerves are taking over. It's not necessarily a good place to be. Sometimes we feel like that's pushing. And in a muscular situation, it is. But most of the time, we're stretching into the ligaments and tendons, and it can cause some damage. So I'm going to take the left hand to the outside of this leg. I'm going to open the right knee a little bit and roll to the outer right arch. See if you can start bringing the left leg out a little bit. Keep the lower back down. Now, it might be here, it might look like this. So it's going to look very different for everybody, depending on where you are. Pressing both the shoulders down. And just keeping the rib cage down. See how this feels for the hips. Just stay here a breath. When you're ready, bring your right knee back up, left leg comes back up. Grab onto your left knee, pull your left knee in, straighten out your right leg, finding wind removing pose. Pressing into the, uh, the base of the thigh and try to press the thigh back a little bit. Now I'm going to take the left knee and I'm going to cross it on my exhale over towards the side, finding a little twist. Think about lifting your hips up a little bit and just nudging your right hip a little towards the center of your mat. Now I want you to take your left hand over towards the right side. And you can even bring your right hand over in that direction. Now on your exhale, think about making this rainbow over your body. Inhale, bring it back to the center. Exhale. Inhale, back to the center. One more time. Exhale. Stay there for a breath. Maybe cactus the arms. If you want some support, that right arm can come down, left arm can extend and relax your back. Relax your glutes. When you're ready, just draw your knees, one right over the other. Bring your feet to the center of the mat, let your knees come back up and really gently press into the lower back. Now I'm going to take the left foot out like we did with that wider bridge. I'm going to grab onto the back of the right thigh and start to roll out the ankle on the right. Pull into the leg a little bit, maybe take the hands up towards the shin and see if I can pull in a little bit more. And again, if I'm shaking when I do this, then, or my butt is lifted up, then I'm not creating a good stretch. And the stretch needs to be a gentle reminder that you're getting gradually more flexible. It's not a forced movement. Now I'm going to start to roll to the outer arch of the left foot and bend the right knee a little bit and maybe bring the right leg a little out towards the side. Now you can straighten it, but I find what happens is we kind of pull over so if you keep a little bend in that right knee, we're opening the hips, but the lower back is able to maintain its position down on the ground. And see if you bring both shoulders down. Stay here for a breath. Close the eyes. Notice where you feel this. When you're ready, 
ready, you're going to bring that right leg back and left knee comes up. Grab onto the right knee, pull the right knee into your ribs and up towards the top of the right chest, and then just extend the left leg straighter. If it's not able to straighten all the way, that's okay. This is called wind removing pose, and I want to press into the lower back. So it really helps kind of unravel my intestines a little bit, which is why it's named wind removing pose, because sometimes it creates a little bit more flow and a little bit more wind. <laughs> so you're going to start to extend that leg up. And on your exhale, bring your right knee over towards the left side, gentle twist. Now, encourage or nudge your hips just towards the center of your mat and allow your legs, glute, and lower back to relax. Bring your left arm out, right arm is going to come somewhere around the top, like you're lying on your left side. On your exhale, see if you can bring that right arm back over towards the right. Now inhale, coming towards the center. And then exhale, coming over towards the right. Inhale, center. And then exhale, I'm going to stay over towards the right. My cactus those arms. If I want a little more encouragement with that left hand, might just rest on the right knee, not push. This is a really easy pose to overdo and hurt your spine. So again, we want to give our body encouragement, not force. When you're ready, stack your knees one over the other. Bring your heels back and towards the center. Knees come up, lower back presses down. And just feel how your lower back feels for a moment. Grab onto your knees and just take a moment, roll a little side to side. Taking your legs up towards the ceiling. If it's comfortable, lift your hips up a little bit. And if this is not available, you can grab onto your block. Bring your tailbone down. Make sure the block sits on the top of your sacral bone, not your spine. And you could bring the legs up. If you're able to come into a baby plow, your hips might lift up a little bit, but I don't want you to compress your neck. So I normally stop right when my feet are parallel, and I pull my crown of the head towards the top of my mat. Gaze towards your knees or your shins, keeping your neck long. I don't want to push the chest in towards, because that causes a lot of compression into your trachea, and it creates a lot of stagnation in the throat. We're going to kind of open the throat here. Just extend the legs and allow the lower spine to open. When you're ready, slowly lower down. And if you're on a block, just place your feet down, lift your hips and take that block out. Grab onto your knees and roll a little side to side. Maybe rolling a little forward or back on your spine. And when you're ready, allow your legs to come out a little bit wider. Reach the arms out a little wider. And maybe find this starfish variation of Shavasana. And again, if that doesn't feel good, find the Shavasana that fits and feels good to your body. Now, in your Shavasana, this is your opportunity to notice these little subtle changes that the body makes. These little openings. So the other day, my boyfriend and I did this 1,500 piece jigsaw puzzle. And it's pretty a slow process at first. You know, trying to find one so when you find one piece and you realize that that one particular piece has a shape, it has a purpose, it has a picture, then it blossoms in to being able to find all these other pieces that fit in. But at first it's just trying to dissect and figure out what is this one piece 
trying to visualize? What, what is it trying to say? Is it a boat? Is it a piece of the sky? Is it a part of a flower or an animal? Where it makes all the other pieces fit into this perfect place. And that's kind of our yoga practice. We, we find one piece of the puzzle. And once we're able to identify that, then all these other pieces start to magically fall into place. But until we find that, we just have to keep trying different things and notice and recognize what is working for our particular puzzle and what pieces are not part of our puzzle but maybe part of somebody else's. And so finding the pieces that fit your puzzle your life. And so staying and allowing yourself to stay in your Shavasana as long as possible. Thank you so much for your practice today and your attention to yourself, your commitment to yourself. Um, I will be posting all of these videos with the outtakes, <laughs> dogs, knocks on the door and all, um, if you don't mind all of those and like these videos, please subscribe, um, like, if you're able to donate for these classes, please feel free to do that. If you have suggestions about classes you would like to see, um, but again, thank you so much. Um, keep whatever brought you joy at the beginning of the class. Keep finding and exploring other pieces of your puzzle that bring you that same level of joy. And you do that, it's like discovering a picture to your 